Hello, everybody. I'm just going to let a few people come in as we've just opened the virtual doors. Welcome, welcome. Give it a minute. Okay. Right, welcome everybody. Um, I'm Alexia Ring. I am the co-founder of Cult Beauty um, and welcome to this year's Cult Beauty Skincare Summit. Um, we've organised some fantastic guests over the four panel sessions that make up this afternoon's summit, which is the culmination of our January Up Close on Skincare campaign to celebrate our skin in all its moods and grooves and naked glory. Um, the panels will be exploring skin confidence, melanated skincare, and we'll end the day looking at in our crystal balls to discuss the 2022 beauty trends. But our first session, the panel and I are gonna be discussing a huge trend that will flourish in 2022 that I call the Great Barrier Relief. Um, more on that in a sec, but first to introduce you to our panel of skincare savants. First, we have Jules Miller. Uh, she's a wellness pioneer and the CEO and founder of my favorite supplement and herbal medicine brand, The New Co. Super, Hi super guys. pioneering. <laughs> hello, hello. Um, after a difficult diagnosis with irritable bowel syndrome, Jules conceived this groundbreaking range with her granddad, no less, Prof George Miller, um, a pharmacist who worked on the discovery of vitamin B12, amongst other things. The new co is all about augmenting our body's systems, for very especially the gut, um, to treat the stresses exacerbated by our modern lifestyle. So welcome, Jules. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you. Um, and then hailing from the country where it's needed the most, we have Mark Elric, the Scottish genius behind the best self-tan in the world, Tan Lux. I think most of us are, are absolutely swamped in it at the moment. <laughs> you just, ah. um, and the founder of Future Beauty Labs as well. However, not content with just faking the glow, he decided to make it to creating a new skin barrier focused brand, which launched to huge acclaim this week called Bioma, which has the tagline boosted barrier, better skin. Hello and welcome, Mark. Thank you, darling. Hi, guys. Nice to meet you all. <laughs> Um, and then we have David Yi, who's the founder of Very Good Light, a US based site with the mission to redefine masculinity through the beauty lens. Prior to Very Good, Very Good Light, David launched Beauty Verticals at Mashable, reported for WWD and the New York Daily News. He also wrote a book called Pretty Boys, which looks at the history of men, masculine identifying people and makeup. David launched the skincare brand Good Light back in March 21, um, which is inspired and formulated with Very Good Light's community. So thank you very much for being here from this super early start, David. What time is it with you again? It's, it's only 6.04 a.m. Oh, I got started. You're, you look so good for 6.04, I have to say. But good morning, everyone. And I'm so excited and honored to be with all of you today everyone's an icon here so thank you for having me <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you and then lastly we have sally hughes who leads little introduction she's known as the voice of reason in the beauty industry in the beauty industry amplified through her long-running column in the guardian and the hugely popular social media content she says what we were all thinking and then just as you get nodding along comfortably she challenges you right back on it welcome sally thanks for coming Hello, I cannot tell you how fast I will be ordering David's book after this. I just scribbled it down as you were doing the intro. I'm going to order it immediately. That sounds so brilliant. Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, so today we were going to be talking about skin barrier function. Um, and of all of the skincare brands and product launches that I've seen coming down the road this year, the most innovative of them um, 
are focused on less on what we've got used to as this sort of less on aggressive fast acting results and more on maintaining a healthy diverse microbiome nurturing the skin's barrier and aligning more with self-care this is the slow beauty movement this is practicing skin kindness our cult concierge service at cult beauty which helps our customers with all their skin hair and well-being concerns have recorded record levels of queries around skin barrier function in the last 18 months having rarely heard an utterance of this phrase before um, sensitive skin and already growing issue pre-pandemic has been very much exacerbated by our collective anxiety However, unlike generations before them, now consumers are looking to improve this situation using more holistic and attitude and techniques to support their health, microbiome and acid mantle. I'm seeing a growing trend for what I call microdosing actives, a practice that echoes the ancient philosophy of homeopathy, which works on the premise that diluted regular doses of aggravating or active ingredients nudges your body into repairing itself more efficiently over time. Another evolution I'm seeing is the growing concept of rewilding your biome, which encourages biodiversity to make it more resilient. It's been a long time coming, but consumers are reframing their beauty routines, treating their bodies and skin as a living ecosystem that needs conscious tending and the understanding that diversity is hugely beneficial, just like in our society and with the environment. I call this the wellness. Now to start off with, um, I'm going to ask a little warm up question to get to know our panelists. Um, what is the worst thing you ever did or do to your skin? Um, and I'm going to start with Mark, because you have the biggest smile. Knowing <laughs> um, okay. smile. I'm, I'm going to focus on internal and external. Um, probably not under, so first of all, from an internal perspective, um, a, a not very well balanced diet and, and too much sugar and um, probably too much champagne as well. Um, and then, <laughs> but I'm on the water today. Um, and then from a skin care perspective, I think I fell down the trap of millions of other people, which was a few years back, really using too many potent exfoliant actives in every single aspect of my regimen. Twice a, twice a day exfoliating with cleansers, using retinols at night, using exfoliant um, serums, and, and not really understanding the impact. One, can these um, serums and products all work well together? Two, what is the short, medium, and long-term impact of doing it? And I honestly thought that the, the signs of a broken barrier were the need to continue, continue to exfoliate versus actually to show my skin some love and kindness and just nourish it. So yeah, so I, I survived and I'm through <laughs> the other side of it. And you're going, uh, and it's true. So reading the signals wrong from the skin and that's definitely a theme that we'll, we'll look at a bit later. Sally, do you wanna go next? Did you ever do anything bad to your skin? <laughs> yeah, yes, definitely. Um, I went to my best friend's uh, 16th when I was 16 to Port Iron on the Gower and um, none of us wore sunscreen and it was boiling and it was the worst sunburn I've ever had in my life. The last time I've ever sunburned, my face was absolutely ravaged. Um, and the other thing I did, um, again, when I was very young, because I have dry skin, uh, which is really, my cell turnover is really rapid. So I have to exfoliate constantly because of my skin condition. I used a buff puff sponge twice a day every day for about 10 years uh, when I was really, really young. And um, it's that thing that Mark was talking about of where you're trying to keep on top of it. You're constantly on the treadmill trying to keep on top of it when in fact you need to step back. But of course, when you're young, you don't have the confidence to step back. And I hope that's something that we'll see change. You don't have the confidence to step back because you just think I must have smooth skin. I must have smooth skin. And you don't think about what you're really doing to it. Brilliant. David. Definitely over exfoliating. I remember turning bright red into a tomato after HA, BHAs and then retinols. I was just really doing the most. I'm Korean. We love our 25 steps. And so just slathering the skin with all the acids together and 
it became so sensitized that I, I kid you not about for six months, it was, it could not even, uh, I couldn't put on a moisturizer without feeling that stinging feeling. So it's all about like Mark said, that skin kindness, recalibrating, and maybe listening to your skin instead of you self-diagnosing. <laughs> listening that's really Lean chemist <laughs> and jules yeah, similar to really the rest of the guys on the panel i think when i was younger i did all the wrong things i didn't have tan lux in my life so i was um going on sunbeds all the time so that was one of one of the big things that i did and then when i turned 30 all of the bad things i did to my skin started to creep up and show and so i went to a dermatologist in new york where i was living and I got put on um, your Baji program and I was using a retinol and I was using it for about three months and I don't know if anybody's used it. It's like having a chemical peel like every day <laughs> for like three months. So your skin is just bright red and it's constantly peeling. At the end of it, I did look gorgeous, but then um, probably a few weeks later, my skin sensitivity just went through the roof. Um, and I started to actually develop a lot more breakouts and all these other things. So yeah, just probably the same, the same as the rest of the guys on this panel, just overusing actives. And kind of a bit of long-term damage to the barrier. Okay. Right, okay, well, we'll learn a bit more about totally. that. Mark, take us through, <laughs> what is the skin barrier? Do we have like a month? <laughs> right, I'm gonna give you a very high level introduction but um we will be talking more about this subject on all of our channels as well and with our incredible partners at cultlet but super high level um your stratum corneum is what is commonly referred to as your skin barrier and it's kind of like a brick and mortar structure and it's formed of cells and lipids so the bricks are the cells and it's sealed by the lipids which are the mortar and those are made up of ceramides, cholesterol, and fatty acids. Now, the term barrier also encompasses the microbiome, and that is the microscopic flora that lives on the surface of your skin and the acid mantle, which is the film that sits on the surface of the skin. And that's derived from the sebaceous and sweat glands. Um, now, when the barrier is normal and healthy, you don't see skin cells shredding and the texture's kind of smooth and elastic and radiant. But when it's compromised, that can really increase the rate in which water's lost from the skin. And that's of the technical term is transepidermal water loss. And that really alters the levels of proteins and lipids that are in your skin. So in a nutshell, if the barrier stratum corneum isn't able to repair itself or isn't given the help it needs to repair, that's when your skin can really appear dry, flaky, inflamed, tight, and sensitive. Right. And that's, that's where it gets a bit difficult to kind of tell the difference between sometimes the effects of an inflamed skin barrier triggered issues and for example something that is dermatitis or it's it's i mean i guess this is where if it gets really bad actually going to see a dermatologist and going to see an expert rather than trying to self-diagnose is, is probably a good idea um so jules why do you think consumers are worrying more about their skin barrier function now than ever before um i i do think that covid has changed our relationship to beauty and I think we're seeing, you know, areas of the beauty industry struggling a little bit and then other areas really flourishing. And the areas that are really flourishing are those categories that are really focused on um, almost like foundational health, the foundational health of your skin or of your hair. It's really thinking about uh, the long term benefits of certain ingredients and products and also almost like preventative measures. Mm -hmm. I think that it is definitely, it's just been a process of people really thinking about investing in themselves and thinking about health and wellness and not simply thinking about quick fixes. And this is something that we spoke about in sort of our, our prep call, which is this, what we've had up until now has been this obsession with speed. Uh, we want everything now. And I think that beauty results is very much part of that. 
And I often talk about our approach to beauty almost similarly to our approach to fad diets, where we think, okay, if I stop eating for two weeks, I'm going to lose those weight and it's all going to be great. And then actually you have to deal with the sort of repercussions afterwards. And it's sort of the same when you're looking after your skin health. Actually, a lot of the times, if you really commit to a couple of things, which we're going to discuss in this panel today, you're going to see way better long-term results. And they actually are not even going to take that long to show up on your skin. That's good to know. So some tips coming up. <laughs> Keep us focused. Um, Sally, we're all becoming hyper-informed consumers. I mentioned about the self-diagnosis, but there's a lot of miseducation and misinformation around. What are some of the worst examples you've seen with skincare? Um, without a doubt, when um, I'm doing events and traveling around the country and going to department stores and so on and meeting lots of women, um, women will always come up to me at the end of the event and ask me for advice on their skin. And 99 times out of 100, I say, what are you doing? What are you doing right now? And literally four minutes later, I'm like, stop talking. This is too much. This is too much explanation as to what you're doing, because you're clearly doing far, far, far too much. And I think that the beauty industry has to take some responsibility for that. I think, you know, there was a trend for actives, turn them up to 11. The more you put on, the more they'll work. And that is simply not true. And we, have, we are now seeing the effects of that, of women using far too many things in their routine because remember if you're using single ingredient skincare there's still about 30 ingredients to support it around it so it's easy to end up with hundreds and hundreds of ingredients on your face in a big routine it's about scaling it back letting your skin calm down and thinking actually what do I really need what's a nice to have what's a need to have and what's an appropriate quantity and I think people have stopped thinking I hope it's changing. I think it's changing, but I think people have stopped thinking about their skin as their friend. You know, if, if your friend was going through a hard time and maybe it was annoying you a bit or, or maybe she was, you know, having a really, really tricky time and tricky to be around, you would go, what's wrong? And you would sit and listen. You wouldn't go, I don't want to hear it. Let's fix you and throw something at it. You would actually take the time and you live inside your skin. You're going to live inside it forever. Sit down think about it, think what can I take away, how can I lighten the load, and let's see where we are before we start fixing and throwing things at the problem. And I think that's that's where we're at, and I'm really, really glad to see people starting to scale back. I just don't personally think you need more than four or five things in your routine. Mm. And as often as you can double up, the better. Yeah, I, th I think that, um, that sentiment around your skin is what we really wanted to evoke with the campaign with the dear skin um letters that we were asking people to write on on social media and share and just like just share a little little love letter to their skin i mean it is it's bloody amazing how it works i mean it's just so intelligent the the way that it moves yeah, and it's about it's about showing respect for the biggest organ of your body, right? Actually show it some respect. I think people are much harsher and more cruel to their skin than they ever would be. You know, you hear people say, oh, I would never smoke or I would never eat this or that. But actually, then they're going with really full on actives and scrubbing away at their skin twice a day. You're meant to be on your skin side. You're not meant to be fighting against it. People are kinder to their hair than they are. To <laughs> That's true. It's true. <laughs> And the problem is, like our husbands, wives, partners, boyfriends, girlfriends, our skin can't talk back to us. It can't answer us back. And, and I think that's where there's been just a lot of misinformation and a lot of people playing dermatologists and a lot the rise of the derm TikTok. And there's a lot of conflicting information out there. And I think as, as brand founders and let cult really raised the bar and lead by example on this it's really important that people are offered unbiased information information that is substantiated that is factual for them to make smart educated informed decisions mm. i think the bit that you said earlier mark though about listening to your skin is so mm. true because often uh, we would have customers who would be saying oh you know i've been struggling with my skin for years and I'm using all of these different products. And yet that, even that doesn't spark change in their routines. So I think often, and it's the same with really so many various different things, your gut health, your skin, just really listening, listening to your body and then taking action. 
because like you say, not everybody's skin is going to react the same. So leaning too much on really us skin or wellness gurus is just not enough. I also think it's really important that uh, we acknowledge how lucky we are that skin is the only organ that shows us every day how it's doing, right? So every other one of our organs, we don't get x-rayed very often in our lives. We don't actually know what's going on unless we're ill. But actually, your skin is telling you every single day how it's doing, how it's feeling. And so it's crazy to kind of look a gift horse in the mouth and ignore it and just think this packaging is telling me more. Yeah, tune into your skin. That's it's sure. really, really cute. I just like to quickly add too. I mean, when you are going through acne or cystic bumps, you want that quick fix, and so you want to just layer on everything that you can and say, "Please, just go away." But actually, in turn, it's doing the opposite. You're exacerbating the problem. You're saying, I hate you so much, skin, that you deserve this acid. You deserve these actives. But I think that what we're all saying is holistically, we just have to practice that self-love, that self-care, and sometimes just hug that skin, you know, just put on some a little bit of, of, you know, those skincare and not just overdo it. I think uh, just to add to that, sorry, I think the really lovely thing about listening to your skin and being in tune with it and really understanding it is that when something does go wrong, which it will do, um, Mm -hmm. there's comfort in knowing that actually within a few days, it's going to get better. And there's comfort in not feeling like you need to run and, you know, have a quick fix and that the next day it has to be better. Um, You know, skin health is obviously really important, but I think like being kind to your skin, like I said, and really it's, it actually helps with managing it mentally. I think this is where having a strong skin barrier comes in because the, the more desensitized your skin is, the, the healthier your barrier is. Even when something goes wrong, it right. will feel fast. Yeah. Stuff's gonna go wrong, it does happen. Like we all have moments where we haven't treated our gut well or just stress that you have absolutely no control over. Um, but actually if you have a, a strong and sort of humming along skin barrier function, it's going to get better much faster. Mark, I wanted to ask you, you've got three hugely successful tanning brands. What made you make your next business baby around nurturing the skin barrier function? Um, You know, I I think I kind of spoke to at the start, Lex, with just my own personal experience of overusing, overtreating, overexfoliating. And then the, the, the truth is through COVID, we turned our social channels into just destinations for our customers and our community to just, you know, find an element of release, places where they could come to be educated and not sold to, and they could be entertained. And I think very quickly, we just started building a much deeper connection with our customers and they then started sharing more information. And I think at that point, we realized actually the problem of over-treating, overusing, overdoing, over-exfoliating is actually much bigger than what I thought. And then from a kind of brand perspective, we're quite vertically integrated anyway. So we manufacture in-house, we've got our own labs, we research, develop, formulate, do a lot of our own sourcing. So from a cosmetic science perspective, we're pretty knowledgeable and the principles and the kind of fundamentals are the same. And I guess when we saw this problem, we actually very quickly believed and realized there must be a better way. There must be an alternative and a more compatible way. So the kind of vision for Bioma was, how do we fix this? How do we rebuild people's skins? And Bioma is essentially the the building blocks to better skin. Um, yeah. Thank you. Do we still have David? I'm here. It's just Mercury's in retrograde, as we know, until <laughs> February 3rd. And so my camera is like overheating. <laughs> but I'm here. You can communicate through that retrograde, though. I can. <laughs> and we yeah. will. We'll get through um, this. <laughs> you've essentially <laughs> built your brand around the needs of your very good light community as well. Um, what were the key themes that kept coming up that led you to focus good light around the pre and probiotic technology? I think it has to do with the microbiome. I mean, we don't 
we, we rarely understand and, and acknowledge that we have trillions of living organisms all throughout our bodies. And so the microbiome, we have so many different microbiomes throughout our body from our armpits to our nether regions, to our face. And so we're really treating the face as its own planet. And so when it comes to the diversity of the microbiome, we wanted to truly celebrate it. We wanted to understand that sometimes you're lacking that good bacteria with the skin barrier function and, and it's compromised. Um, but also there's just so many different signals that your skin is damaged. And we wanted to really elevate the conversation when it comes to a healthier skin barrier. I mean, uh, some, some kind of si signs that it could be damaged is allergens or sun exposure. Um, maybe it's too alkaline, um, over exfoliation or stress. I mean, we need to also give into the idea that our skin barrier is slightly acidic. We need to think about the pH balance. Uh, the acid mantle is around 5.7, 5.5 .5 to 5.7. And some products are way too alkalized. Our water is also alkalized. And so you probably need a good toner, you know, a good serum or a good cleanser that will get it back to its really healthy and happy acidic state. But when it comes to our community, it's all about finding products that elevate the conversation around self-love and self-care, but really holistically and really truly from the inside out. And Jules, I know that you talk about gut health, but that's something that we really do care about as well. I think to that, David, what's really interesting when we uh, launched our probiotic topicals was, um, yeah, just how uninformed people were about the connection between your internal microbiome and external microbiome. So mm. about 26% of our microbiome lives in our gut and about 21% lives on our skin. And that should really oh, give you no, it's that much. Yeah, it's, it's really comparable. So that should really give you a signal of how much you should be paying equal attention to, to both inside and outside. I'd have to count myself amongst those people that you were talking about, because actually it isn't, I do tend to think of them very separately, which is really stupid. Um, because as we know, all body functions do work in parallel and, and symbiotically with each other. Um, and the more we learn about our body functions, the more we learn about how they, the thing that we thought was inconsequential, the appendix, for example, mm -hmm. actually has a really important part of some one function that affects so many other things. So um, ignore a function at your peril, I think is probably the, <laughs> should yeah. be the better way of looking at it. Um, David, I love your tagline for your for your brand, beauty beyond the binary. Um, do you think the beauty industry's rather simplistic segregation of male and female routines has been detrimental in any way, or do you think it's it's becoming something that's really positive? Thank you so much for that question. I mean, all throughout history, I mean, I wrote an entire book about the history of men masculine identifying folks and their relationship to beauty. Men, women, non-binary folks have always empowered themselves with beauty. They have never strayed far from it or never feared it. But I think that in the modern era, we have this notion that it's feminized or maybe it's an act for one gender, gender or another. So there's that stigma around self-care. And at its core, I really don't think that beauty products have a gender identity, right? It's the folks who use it that empower themselves and, and love who they are, they are and express their gender identities through that self-care aspect. But I do think that it has been a little detrimental because we have by and large men saying, hey, self-care is not for me. This is a little, uh, little off-putting. But what we need to understand is that at, at its core, it's coming back to that self-actualization, that self-empowerment, and that self-love. I always say to hug your skin, like I said at the beginning of our conversation, but it's really looking in the mirror. Self-care is about pouring over your pores and really becoming who you've always been meant to, to become. And I think that at the end of the day, we all just need to really practice that, that love. And, and that's what self-care and, and skincare is for me. I think it's how it makes you feel. And, yeah. and at the end of the day, you know, I, I say, I say to, you know, our, our internal family every single day, if someone asks what you do, you make millions, you help millions of people every single day feel better about themselves, feel more confident, feel happier, feel 
healthier. And, and that's such an incredible thing about this industry and the fact that, you know, that, that one little moisturizer or that lipstick or that serum, it's not just what it actually does, it's what it makes you feel and, and the actions in which you take after using that product. And I just think this industry is so incredible because beauty well, does, yeah. it does change the world and it does change how it makes us feel. And it's, it's really, it's an honor to, to participate in this industry and to serve it. And that doesn't have a gender or an ethnicity, does it? So it's, it's really key. Yeah. Um, I, can I just say that I, I, I agree with Mark. I love working in this industry. I'm very happy to be in this industry. But at the same time, I would also say that this industry now has a job to do in that mm. it, this industry has kind of caused a lot of compromised skin barriers, in my opinion. And that is just how I feel. And I think that we are at a time and, and certainly were at a time about a year ago where the whole industry confused this obsession, fascination that consumers had with skincare, which was real, with knowledge and understanding. And those two things are not the same. And I think what happened was suddenly all these actives use a retinol, use this acid, use this peel, use all of this stuff. And people dutifully went out and bought it at great profit to the industry. And now those people are paying the piper through their skin. Mm. And that is a reality. I love this industry too. But we really need, if our job is to look after people's skin and to empower people to look after their skin, we actually need to help them and break it down and make it simple and make it sensible and make it factual. And so I think this is why this talk is important. And this is why it's an exciting time for this industry, because really there's some mopping up to do, in my opinion. There are women with too many products who've dutifully bought it, don't really know what they're doing with them and are saying, my skin hurts. My skin looks dull. My skin is still spotty. My skin is still this. And right. so it we refocus on this. Can you take us through what are the signs that you've broken your skin barrier? Of course. Um, oh. Sorry, was sorry. that Sally or me? Sally, you go, my oh, darling. Sorry. Um, there are there are there are lots of uh, there are lots of little tells your skin is giving you. So, um, extreme dullness. Um, for a long, long time is often a sign of overexfoliation. So the very thing that you're trying to fix, which is a little bit of dullness, you're actually exacerbating through overexfoliating because what you've done is as much as you're taking that dead skin off, you're, you've also compromised your barrier. So your barrier can't hang on to the things that make your skin glow. So Overexfoliation is a really, really big one. Um, Overuse of um, acids in conjunction with retinols, too many of both, that's another one. I personally am not a huge fan of masking unless they're just kind of quick fix before you go out, little booster masks. I think people have been using really um, heavily concentrated active masks too often because they think, oh, well, if once a week is the treat and we'll make my skin look a bit better, every day will make my skin look really good. But of course, that's not true either. And so uh, dullness, um, itchiness, redness, soreness. And I do want to say that if you are experiencing, if you have sensitive, dry, flaky skin, that does not necessarily mean that you have mistreated your skin. Some of us have that inherently. However, if it is getting worse or if it is sudden and you can't pin it on an illness, so my skin was dreadful over Christmas because I had COVID, but generally I'm not sensitive because I look after my skin. If you can't pinpoint a life circumstance to it, it is probably your routine and probably your product and it is time to step um lots lots and lots of things changes in your skin that you're not used to changes that are unfamiliar that you can't peg to illness or hormones are probably the result of a compromised barrier and I think what's really important to understand is in our race to use actives for anti-aging uh properties we all kind of want anti-aging ingredients right what people don't realize is the single most aging thing you can do to your skin is inflame it inflammation is aging it is more aging than anything mm -hmm. and so the very thing that you're trying to treat is what you're causing by hammering away at your skin day and night mm. i agree sally and i think i i think the problem is like you said is people are constantly striving for something that actually shouldn't exist and that one that they shouldn't be and two that actually isn't achievable and 
Edu and it all starts with education. And it all starts with re-educating the consumer to really make those smart, informed choices to treat their skin, to nurture their skin every single day. I totally agree. I really liked what Sally said about um, beauty brands taking accountability about just everything. And I think in the same way that we're talking about this realization that our internal is connected to our external, I think we also need to think about how our behavior impacts the environment and then how the environment then impacts things like our skin. So at the NUCO, we often talk about this idea of our health being connected to the health of the planet, which is so related to this because what the shelfie era really did was that we were all obviously adopting all these very complex beauty routines, destroying our skin barrier. We then were sending billions of units of packaging to landfill, a key contributor to pollution, which is a key stressor to then really breaking down our skin barrier. And then as a response to that, we were told that we needed to use more products to counteract that. So, um, you know, I, I think that we are in a new era where I think luckily consumers are becoming more informed. And I think luckily in that same vein, um, there are just great, great brands, great labs, great innovation around the topic of the skin barrier. Jules, while I'm talking to you, is it possible to biohack your way to better skin function? <laughs> Not all the time, um, sort of, it depends. So I think, when we're thinking about um, things that we can ingest to improve the skin barrier, it's worth talking about the four different functions of the skin barrier. So we've sort of discussed this briefly, but we obviously have the chemical layer, the physical layer, the immune function, and then the microbiome. So when we're thinking about the outer layer of the skin, so the physical layer, that's obviously where the lipids live. So lipids essentially turn into um, essential and non-essential fatty acids, cholesterol and ceramides. So foods that are really high in omegas are going to be great for your skin. So things like oily fish, salmon, good fat. So olive oil, um, avocado. I actually love to have things like um, organic bone broth, which is obviously very rich in collagen. So that's also going to help with your skin. Um, beyond that, the chemical layer and the microbiome are obviously connected. Again, we've already sort of touched on this already, but the chemical layer essentially creates a slightly acidic pH of the skin so that your microbiome can be really healthy and thrive on the skin. So what we can really do to support that function is obvious things. Topically, we need to be using products that don't turn the skin to um, alkaline and then disrupts our microbiome. But then internally, using a really good quality probiotic and then obviously eating things like fermented foods are really going to help contribute. Um, and then lastly, in terms of the immune function, obviously also connected to the microbiome function of the skin. So here we want to be really limiting, not completely removing these foods from our diet because we all have to live our lives and enjoy our lives, but just limiting foods that are going to cause inflammation in the skin. So things like sugar, gluten, too much dairy, things like I know, soy products. I know, <laughs> you can still eat them, just don't have them you know, three times a day, every day. Yes, and um, one of your well, your your best selling products on on cult beauty actually is the the prebiotic and yes. probiotic. Um, when you're looking to rewild your biome, when you're looking to improve your intake of of pre prebiotics or probiotics, like, do you have any good guidance for people so they can to really help their microflora? Yeah, I mean, going back to something you said earlier, where you were like, oh, I was one of these people that weren't very well informed about it. Most people aren't, because actually the research within probiotics itself is so new. I think we really only started to think about probiotics and testing them in a clinical setting for things like IBS and the immune system, really within the last 10 years. So a lot of... Yeah, a lot of the research that's really connected to the skin is also really new. Um, initially, the way that we were looking at it was that we were seeing a connection between people who had eczema, uh, acne, various different skin issues with people who had things like IBD, leaky gut syndrome and IBS. So we were looking to see what was the connection between the two. Um, I mean, with our probiotic, obviously, it was one of the first products that we ever developed. 
Um, I developed it because I personally had IBS. Um, so that was our key focus. And then what we found um, over the years was that we had so many customers coming to us saying, oh my gosh, my eczema's improved. Oh my gosh, you know, my breakouts have significantly reduced. My skin is more glowy. Um, so then we sort of went in deeper and looked at what all of the research that was coming out that connected the skin barrier function to probiotics. And essentially the way that we are testing things is we're looking at two um, different functions. So we are running clinical trials amongst people who are using the probiotics for around two months time and then testing uh, transepidermal water loss, which is basically just how much water is being evaporated from the skin. Um, and then another thing that's called STH, which is basically just measures the amount of static water holding sort of skin. Um, so the amount of static water holding in the skin. And that's really where you're starting to see improvements connected to probiotics. Yeah, um, that is, I mean, it is really interesting to see. I've got, I've just seen there's some probiotic um, questions here, because I think we need to to move on to, to questions from you guys so that we can fit you in. But um, David, what probiotic bacteria do you use in your brand and in what concentration? Good We're using it. lactobacillus lysate, and it's the same kind of bacteria that translates uh, milk into cheese. But in clinical studies, we've been seeing that it helps to repair and heal and, and regulate your skin. Um, it also helps with the speed and quality of epidermal growth and results in a better, more robust barrier function. In a randomized controlled trial, because we were looking at different probiotics for, you know, our We Come in Peace serum, uh, it, it helps help the skin to uh, not only repair itself, but improve sensitive skin as well. Um, and then separate studies have shown that the specific strain of bacteria that we use and the lysates have, have uh, treated acne by helping with inflammatory lesions. Uh, that, I mean, it's, it sounds like a really interesting thing to look more deeply into and actually sort of read around the lysate. Um, yeah, I want to be clear that it's a lysate. It's not a live bacteria. Um, that would be super, I mean, as Jules would know, uh, probiotics are very finicky. And if they're not in the correct environment, they'll, they'll die, right? So you will have to refrigerate it. And maybe if you open the container, they won't be stable. We use a lysate. And this, this really uh, is not a, a non-replicating probiotic. It will have a kind of similar results as a pro live probiotic, but it is a probiotic lysate. It's really good. To, it's really good to know that actually, because uh, it can get quite confusing with something that has live bacteria in from opening. If it was wet, basically it would die within 24 hours unless it was sort of in yes. the fridge and even yep. then. Um, so it tends to be ingredients that help your natural bacteria um, just make it a lovely environment for, for it to, to live in. So it's encouraging the good and, and which hopefully will fight the bad. Um, so Mark, I just wanted to um, ask, like, how long does it take to fix a broken skin barrier? And so the great thing is if you're using, if you're using the right products um, and have a balanced diet, um, 28 days. So scientific research, basically supports the claim that we can repair it in 28 days. When we were developing Bioma, what we actually discovered is when it comes to barrier care, the inclusion levels of ceramides, cholesterol, and fatty acids in products was quite inconsistent. And there's actually a compatible ratio, a golden ratio, an equimolar ratio of formulating with three parts ceramides, one part cholesterol, one part fatty acids because that is the most compatible level for your skin to accept the product and for your barrier to repair, restore, regenerate, or just continue to function at its absolute best. And that's what our triceramide complex is, Lex. Is, and that's not just you know, proven through our own clinical trials and our own studies. Actually, years of scientific study support that if you're formulating at that ratio, the barrier can repair quicker and it can function at its absolute best. One of the things that I talked about at the beginning is, is microdosing as a, uh, as a practice. Um, Sally, how does one even begin to embrace this in a practical way? 
I think we have to think about when your skin, your skin barrier is compromised, when your skin is not great, what would you do if you didn't feel great? What would you do if you were off work and you felt rough? Okay, so you would get under a blanket, you'd get under a duvet and you drink a load of water. It's basically what your skin needs. It needs cushioning. So it needs some fatty acids, it needs some cholesterol, some ceramides, and it needs some water. So it needs some hyaluronic acid. And you need to treat your skin the way you would treat your body if you were feeling rough. And, and probiotics are brilliant. And all of the all of the products we're talking about will be really useful. But just in the first instance, and you just you don't have the budget or you don't have the inclination or the time to go out and buy a new thing. What you need is kind of fat and water. And I think somebody said in um, in comments earlier, I think it was uh, Sharmadine actually was saying, you know, that when she's eating a really low fat diet, it shows in her skin. And I really agree with that. You need fat. You need fat in your skin. You need good fat in your skin. Um, and that's a really, really great first port of call in terms of topical care, fatty acids, ceramides, cholesterol, those cushiony duvet kind of feeling. <laughs> <laughs> then you would drink loads of fluids. So make sure you have your hyaluronic acid, your glycerin, all your humectants to kind of hang on to water. Those two things alone, fat and water will help you enormously without you having to buy anything, do anything special. And actually, although Mark is absolutely correct, 28 days is scientifically where we're at, you should see a massive improvement in two to three days and even absolutely. bigger improvement nine days you can fix this really quite quickly if you just stop cool down go really really easy take out all your actives and then introduce them slowly back in that's great I just to add to this the idea of doing a lot less um something else that i started doing was i only wash my face once a day and that made a huge difference so again, you know, if you don't have the budget or whatever it is, you just want to minimize the amount of products that you're using for environmental reasons, as an example, um, give it a go. Particularly, I think I'm not wearing, I don't wear a lot of makeup and I'm not wearing makeup every day. Is that morning or evening? I'm really- no, I wash in the evening, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> evening. It's just, I don't have, I think also because I've been looking after my skin now for a considerable amount of time, I don't wake up with greasy skin or, you know, really feeling like I need to wash my face when I wake up in the morning. And that's with products, obviously, I, you know, I'll get in the shower and stuff, but it's just something that has worked for me and does seem to be working for quite a lot of people just washing their face less. Just quickly, because I think we've got to go, can you just give us the one product in each of your ranges that is the best for skin barrier function in your personal opinion? Jules, you start. Um, so every product that we have in our range that talks to skin health prioritizes as a skin barrier because we're a health company. Uh, but I think in terms of my favorite product that is always a surprise, I think for people, is um, skin hydrator. I think people are always surprised that you can improve, uh, that, you, that, that something like an ingestible moisturizer actually exists and you can really see the effects. Um, so within the formula, we've got things like ceramides, which obviously we've discussed, they're clinically studied ceramides, um, but we've also got ingestible hyaluronic acid, we've also got collagen, and we've got aloe vera. It will leave your skin feeling just really plump and juicy, probably within like a two week period. David. Oh, you're on mute. You're on mute. That old one. Oh my goodness, that is like mistake <laughs> number one. Oh, sorry. Okay, Lactococcus Ferment Lysate is what we have in our um, We Come in Peace Probiotic Serum. We named it the We Come in Peace Probiotic Serum because it's almost as if alien invader superheroes are coming onto your microbiome, which is your the, your own planet. And so I would definitely say get that serum. The probiotic extracts really do help to promote a robust skin barrier function, Thank regulating you. the microbiome with the good and the bad bacteria. And then Mark, just to close. Right, I'm gonna be really quick. So basically our triceramide complex is in every product. However, I do think you need a good cleanser. So I would say our cleanser is like a yoga session for your skin, because no matter what state you go into yoga, you always leave feeling recalibrated and, and refreshed and revived. So I would say our cleanser and or two moisturizers because one is a light gel cream with niacinamide and the ceramide complex. The other one is a rich cream with bokka choy and shea and the ceramide. All of our products are multifunctional. They give your skin what it needs 
and they all have many functions, many features, many benefits. But I would say cleanser moisturizers. God, you guys, I mean, all, all three of your ranges are utterly beautiful. Um, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge, for opening your brains to me. Um, Mark, David, Jules and Sally, you are absolute legends. Thank you. Thank you, Lex. You're yeah. the biggest legend. <laughs> thank you for giving us this forum to do it. It's incredible. We really appreciate it. So honored. Thank you. It was great. Yeah, thank you.